hi guys welcome back to the channel today my name is Osereme. if today is your first time seeing my channel thank you so much for stopping by hit on the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell if you're interested in everything sewing tutorials and pattern drafting okay so in today's video i want to share with you guys how to cut a 360 degrees flip now this particular procedure goes for whatever um, part of the dress you actually want to place the flare whether it's on the sleeve as part of a skirt as part of a dress the procedure for cutting is the same so if you're interested in learning how to cut a 360 degrees flare keep on watching and let's get started i got nightmares in my head i fear that the thoughts build up until i can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper anxiety filling up every space no privacy and silently it could build and build so guys i'm going to be using this pattern paper scissors tape and marker to really show you guys how to go about it and of course i'll be showing you what it looks like on my fabric when i cut it out on the fabric as well so um whether on your fabric or on your pattern paper the same procedure is going to apply so if you're cutting this on your fabric just follow the same thing i'm doing right now before you start folding your fabric you want to make sure that the amount of fabric you have is going to be enough for you to get the length of your flare okay so let's go ahead and start with this paper so let's assume our fabric is wide open like this okay so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold your fabric your pattern paper whatever you are using into two equal halves like this and then you fold it again so all together you folded it now into four places so what, whenever you're cutting a 360 degrees flare you are going to fold your fabric into four like i did here so guys once you fold it into four you're going to notice that there are two parts to it so you're going to notice that one part is open like this and then the other part is folded here and it's not open so this is the part we're going to take all our measurements from okay so the measurement you're going to be taking here is going to be determined by the part of the garment where the flare is going to be placed whether it's around the waist around the sleeve or around the end of your skirt so let's assume that we're going to be placing this around the waist for a child and we'll assume that this child's waist is 16 inches so because this paper is folded into four that's 16 inches we're going to divide it into four also if you're going to be placing this on your sleeve it's going to be the same thing so the area of the sleeve where you want the flare to start from you're going to measure it and you will divide it into four so now i've divided this 16 into four and it's four 16 divided by four is four but i'll be adding half an inch to that four inches that i got this is because we need some allowances whether it's for you to be able to place your zipper at the back or for you to be able to stitch it together on the side you'll be needing some allowance okay so i will use four and a half inch now to just make a rough curve like this just look at where i'm doing this here so use that four and a half inch to make a rough curve and make a point there so from that point i'm going to measure down from the center to meet that point and whatever i had there i had two points i think 2.6 so that 2.6 i'm placing my tape at the center point and i'm using that 2.6 to just mark around so place your tape on that center point use the 2.6 to mark all the way around so you see what i'm doing here i made some tiny tiny dots and now i'm just connecting my dots so if you do it like this you're going to realize that by the time you curve it it falls back to that 4.5 inches that you wanted to have okay so now just use my marker to make this nice curve so now this is the waist for this child now from this waist you are going to measure down to how long you want your flare to be now this area is a little bit tricky because sometimes if you want your flare to be very long your fabric that you have folded might not necessarily be enough to give you the length that you are looking for let's assume that we want this flare to be 12 inches long you can see that this tape on this side is not up to 12 inches but on this other side i'll be able to get that 12 inches so what you are going to do in this kind of situation is that you're going to start from wherever your paper gets to 12 inches and the other side that is not enough you will have to cut another piece later to use and finish it up so let's assume 12 inches is starting from here if i wanted to use 12 inches so i'll mark from here and continue to this side so i know that this side i will need to join another piece to cover it up this is something you actually notice a lot especially if your flare is going to be long 
so for this tutorial now i want to use nine inches so from the first curve that we made i'm my, placing my tape on the first curve no longer at the top i'm placing this now on the first curve which is our waistline and i'm coming down to nine inches so i'm using this nine inches now to mark all the way around so if you're doing this for a sleeve this might just be perfect this nine inches length might just be perfect for a very small child nine inches le length is perfect but if you're making for if it's a peplum nine inches as well is perfect but let's assume you're making a gown for an adult from the waistline you might have to go down by about 20 inches if you fold your fabric in it might not be enough like i said before so you just get the 20 inches wherever it gives you 20 and you know that you need to add some fabric to it to complete it so as you can see i'm done creating the dots all the way around like this if you're cutting with on your actual fabric you're going to do the exact same thing with your chalk so guys now we're going to go ahead and cut it out so on the waist area here if you are cutting on your actual fabric you might want to leave about half an inch away from the actual line that you had because you'll be needing that half an inch later for stitching allowance also at the end here you can go ahead and cut about half an inch away but i'm cutting on the exact lines right now because this is a pattern paper so guys once you're done cutting it out this is what it's going to look like if you had a full circle if your material was enough but in some cases if the material is not enough you notice that one side is looking like this so all you have to do is to just cut another piece of paper, uh, fabric to use and finish it up and then you cut everything together to get a full flare so this is what my flare is looking like right now i'm just going to go ahead and open one side so if you open one side if it's on your fabric it's going to lay perfectly i'm going to show you guys shortly what it looks like on my fabric so this is what we have when you're done cutting it out so this is not laying perfectly let me just show you guys what it looks like when you cut it on your fabric so guys this is what i had when i cut it out on my fabric so you can see how the flare is laying perfectly see it on this other side from the waist so if i open it up like this let me open it up you can see the whole flare and also i've gone ahead to cut out a lining piece and lined it as well the lining is going to be exactly the same thing as you cut on your actual fabric so guys i went ahead to pin it on my dress form and this is what it looks like so you can see how full this flare is there is no joining anywhere for this particular one because this was for a child and it looks so nice it actually looks very nice it's full it's standing perfectly because i have lined it up with a lining but if you want your flare to stand more pointy than the way this one is looking right now a simple way of going about it is to iron hair stay to it so you can see how this green is looking like to get something like this all you have to do is iron hair stay to the fabric before attaching the lining so that's basically all for this tutorial